Hello and welcome. I will be showing you my code structure walkthrough for Module 7's Keen task. So this will be a quick code structure walkthrough as I understand there is quite a lot of confusion here as you can probably see. But essentially we have our read one node which is connected with the imagery as you can see. So if I push one, you can see that it's just a green screen and we have our background over here, which is just this, right? So essentially we set up a hue keyer alpha to sort of adjust some of the color parameters over here, as you can see which we then add in a pre malt to verify those settings. So as we connect off from read 2, we have our IBK color V3, which I have adjusted to minus 0 0.1169, and that is connected in with our IBK gizmo V3 1. So our C goes into the IBK color V3, our foreground, which is FG, goes into, of course, this imagery. And our background goes into a transform node, which was a thing I added later on. Essentially, the background went straight into the background, but I have it going into the transform node, as I noticed there was a slight gap in here when I first started it. So from the transform node, you can see we go down to our key light. Now what the key light does is it adjusts a certain amount of gain and balance and we can set certain colors. So if we hold control and we left click, you can see a little red dot pops up here, or a little red square. So that is a single pixel. And we adjust that set square to our screen color over here. Our alpha bias stays the same. We adjust our clip black and clip white accordingly. And we can also play around with tuning, like our tuning, our inside mask and crops. I didn't really worry about crops because there was no need. But you can see that the key light is connected into both our transform, which is connected into our background which is also connected into our read two. So after our key light, we have our dilate one. And as we keep going down, you can see this connects in <coughs> and adds a blur node. So the blur node makes it so that it's blurry. So it, it's pretty self-explanatory on what it is. And our blur node is connected into our invert, so it adds both our channels in. And if we go back to read two over here, you can see we have a hue correct hooked up, which has been adjusted to a blue tone, which we then have hooked up to a shuffle one node. Now, our shuffle one node is connected with our merge one stencil, so we want our merge one and our hue correct to sort of collaborate to adjust this specific sort of tone, as you can see. So if we go back over here to our shuffle node, you can see that there's not much we really had to do. We set in B RGB and our RGB alpha is hooked up to in A alpha. So underneath our shuffle node, we then have our pre malt to verify those settings. So as you can see, I have a merge two over here, but I also have a merge three stencil here. So what the merge two over is doing is merging the background with the foreground, which is connected into our right node. The right node essentially is what allows it to export in a specific way, as I've shown in previous videos. But we also have our roto paint node. So with our roto paint, I'll open it up and you can see we've created boxing here. So you can see that it moves as the timeline moves. So if I press play, 
you can see that it slowly moves with it. So without this, that will be see-through and we do not want that see-through. So we're having the Merge 3 stencil hooked up to our Merge 2 over, as you can see. So it's not hooked to right, right is hooked to Merge 2 over, but Merge 3 stencil is hooked to Merge 2 over because with our stencil, it creates this imagery. So if we bring it back to our Merge 2 over, we can close all of these and as you can see, I'll press play just to let it load up. So it will go faster and it goes from about frame one right up until frame 130. So as you can see, we've adjusted the tones. It could do with some more refining, of course. Everything can always do with more refining. And if we want to remove our little red dot, just hit control and right click. And that removes your little red dot so you don't see that annoying pixel there 24 seven. So once this passes through, I'll just let it, if it's going to pass through, hopefully Nuke does not crash. And there we go. So we almost had new crash, which would have been highly unfortunate. But as you can see, it, it's pretty in tune. And if we go into our curve editor, so we'll merge to curve editor. Curve editor does not really show much. Neither does our dope sheet, but if we actually open up our roto paint nodes, you can see our dope sheet fills in, as well as if we open up our, so let's open up our blur node. Blur's not showing much. But each one sort of shows different things, essentially. It's still showing roto paint one, which is fine. That is perfectly fine. So it probably will only show roto paint one because it's really the only one that's doing major changes and we don't have any other roto paints. So that is perfectly fine and that is normal. And if you want that little red lining gone, you literally just close the tab that was connected to it, which was our roto paint tab. As you can see, I have like these little dots and everything, keeping it quite relatively neat. So you just hold control and you click. That's it. Simple as that. That's all you have to do. And that will add a little dot. 